loops by selecting them all and dragging them onto this pad, and you'll see they'll load one, two, three. Mm. Um, could have put them anywhere, really, uh, but I just chose these three pads. You can see right now they're loaded as one shots, yes. which we don't want. So I'm just going to click where it says one shot, and then it's going to set it to a loop and do the same on the other two. Loop and loop. So now we have three loop pads. You'll notice in this top area in the sequencer, instead of showing the velocity stocks like we had before for our kick drum part and whatnot, uh, on the loop segments we have these smaller rectangles, and those represent the slices that are to be played back. So by default we have from lower left to top right and they have little numbers in there too, which might be hard to read at home, but they say one, two, three, four, et cetera. So you can see the number of the slice, which corresponds yeah. down here to these slices. Uh, little numbers, I can see that, yes. Yeah. If, I, if I squint and look hard enough. <laughs> That's right. So, so this area here allows you to, if you want to rearrange the loop or have it on various patterns playing uh, different rearrangements of the loop. Uh, so right now, with this diagonal that comes up by default, we're going to hear the loop play as you would expect, just dragging in the loop. So. Yeah. Um, let's hear what we've got. I'm just going to add the kick into the two and the four here. I already did that to the kick drum. I got a four on the floor, which is, I believe, what your kick was doing. Uh, so now if we play back... Sweet. There you have it. Yeah, so we've got all the parts playing, yeah. and now it's easy to, to go ahead and do variations. We could use the repeater bar and... makes it much more live and a spontaneous way to manipulate that stuff, where if you have it on a bunch of tracks, to me it gets more tedious. I, I, you know, one thing I love about Nerve and working with software drum machines or drum machines like Nerve is just have everything kind of right under your fingers in terms of one area. So now all of these parts are joined together in a sense. They're all under this pattern A. Yep. Um, if I switch to pattern B, now we hear nothing. Yep. Um, so. It makes it really easy to whatever your idea that you come up with. Um, for instance, I said, you know, oh, a four bar kick part or something like that. It makes it very easy. And let me demonstrate that as well. This is getting advanced into the slightly more advanced features of Nerve, but you can, there's this global switch here. If you turn that off in this pattern area, that's telling Nerve that the pads now have their own pattern lengths, essentially. They can all be on their own uh, page number. So uh, I'm going to have uh, the kick drum take up four pages. That way we can have a little kick fill at the end of four bars. So I'm just going to option drag along and set the chain to four. And I'm going to add that extra kick drum in. And now what you're going to notice is on, for instance, the snare pad, it's still a one bar part. Mm, yeah. So this is kind of handy. If I decided I wanted to change my snare part, if I only wanted it on the two and I wanted to use a different snare on the four or something like that, um, it's very easy to do. I don't have to go copy that change to all the various places. So. I like this global switch. It's something I fought to leave in the software, even though it can be a little confusing to a new user. Yeah. Um, you know, it defaults to on, so you can kind of forget it's there. But once you decide you might want something different lengths, I find that's a very handy way. Instead of copying all these guys over, um, I like to think of them more as their own independent sequencers. Sequencers. So yeah. that's what that kind of turns into with when the global switch is off. Yeah. You know, each one's got its own length. Um, they all still follow this top row. So if I switch to B, everything's still off, as it were before. Um, but this, this way it's very handy. You still have total control over everything at once if you want with this top row of the patterns, but their page or bar length is different now. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do something kind of interesting to maybe one of these, these loops as well. Now if we hit play, we should hear that four bar kick part I just made. Um, let's see, bar three, here comes, here comes the fill. Nice. So we have that, but let's say, um, you know, I think I'd like this kick to be a little more filtered here on yep. the four instead of just sounding so mechanical. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that step and I'm going to instead put it on this other kick part. So I'm going to make that a four bar part, but it never plays unless it's on bar four and it plays right there. So, yeah. so now we have this other kick part, but of course we have no sound for this kick part. Yep. So what I'm going to do is copy our main kick drum over to this other pad. So now you can see we have two different locations where that exists. But now what I'm going to do is uh, filter this one out. So we have a filter down here. And I'm going to just crank it so that's just, you know, L for low pass. And yep. crank it so it's just a little more muffly. And then I'm going to go to its sample here and add a little more of the soft clip and make it just a little more deeper. Um, and maybe add a little pitch. I think that's a little too much gain, but we're getting there. And maybe don't need the resonance and maybe a little lower. There we go. So it's we've got now we've got a sort of accent kick that's gonna come around on the fourth. 
So cool, so now we've got the kick drum. Maybe we can do something to one of these loops to make it a little more interesting. Um, maybe we should listen to what else is going on the track with those chords. Bring those in for a little inspiration of, of what to do. Um, I guess you could oh, you just click the little hide button there at the, the green one. We can, we, right. can, we can hide these parts. Oh, right, right. great. Get Excellent. Rid of that. There we go, yeah. So let's just uh, unsolo now. I'm going to mute these for a second, just listen. And turn that guy down a bit. It sounds good, but I think it's just a little too busy for the main part of the song, say yeah. the verse and the intro. It's a, uh, we got a little too much tambourine going on. Yeah. You know, if we turn it down too quiet, it's just too backgroundy at that point. So mm. what I'm thinking is we should try carving out a bit of these uh, extra hits mm. in here to give it just a little more space to the groove. So I'm gonna um, start with one, one tambourine part at a time. Here, we'll start with this guy. And this feels a little flammy as well, so I'm going to try to like quantize it out a bit because you have these slice um, points and you can move these slice points around. So what this is going to do is make the tambourine part now quant more quantized to the beat, um, so things won't be quite as flammy against the other parts. How would you move those around, Steve? Oh, what I'm doing is I'm clicking, you can also use a mouse wheel if you're lucky enough to have yeah. one, and you can scroll to whichever slice you want to change. Yep. And I'm looking at the overview, I can see where I want it over here, yep. and then I'm clicking in that direction. Oh, you're clicking over there, yeah. Yeah, so, and once you That's get right, easy, yeah. once you see right where you want the slice point, you just click right there, and it jumps you right to that spot. That's really nice. So it's pretty easy to yeah. you know, go through there and get those slices, no, no dragging around really yeah. needed. Um, and I think that'll probably be good for us, if not too mechanical. Might be a little too mechanical. We definitely want some swing, so I'm going to add in the swing up here. And I still think it's just probably too busy, so yeah. let's try to pull out some of these clanky hits, I think, on the three, and we'll maybe find an open hi hat or something else to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those. Nice. You know, it sounds a little strange like this right now, of course, because we don't have the other parts in. But I think something like that might work yeah. decently. In fact, we could even short this pretty much doing that anyway. Yep. My little vocals crept in there somehow. <laughs> I'm going to have to go mute him. I, I got rid of the cycle, that's why that happened. <laughs> yeah, that's why it happened, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's sounding better to me already. Yeah. So, great, so let's... We can cycle it if you like. Oh, yes, thank you. Nice. Yeah, I think maybe something like that we could bring in. Start it simpler and then bring in this part all together and then add it with this extra hit in. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do up here is just drag this pattern to three different spots, like so. And now I've copied everything that we have going to three different locations. On the first one, I'm gonna get rid of this altogether. I'm gonna say, you know what, we don't need any of this part. And you know, you could mute automate it or something, but I think that's the easy way. And then this next one, I'm gonna get rid of this step here. And then this last one, I'm gonna leave it in just like that. Yep. So now let's listen to our three different parts. And of course we can trigger these patterns via MIDI. That's right, so that would maybe be the easiest way for some people would be doing that. Some people might prefer just visually sticking the notes in a piano roll at the moments that they want them. Yep. Uh, and, then the, and then the third way would be literally you could just hit record and we can click these and it'll change the various parts. Um, yep. if, you know, if you decided you wanted these all in say a very short amount of time, like an eight bar thing, the easiest way would be just to do it right here on this one tambourine part, that's all we're changing. And in fact, that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to have four bars go with no tambourine, then I'm going to bring in this tambourine, and then I'm going to bring it all the way to that one. Yep. So I'm just going to go on the C one here and copy this eight times out. And right now, since that global switch is off, we're just copying this tambourine part to all eight. And in fact, we don't even want it on the first four. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Yep. Do that for the first four. 
And then these second two, I'm going to take out that one hit. And then the last two, it's going to have that. So now we just have to tell Nerve if this is an eight bar chain that we want. Now it's going to be looping around those eight bars. One thing that's great about this plugin, you've got a side chain feature built in there, haven't you? That's right. That's one thing I really love to use. I mean, it's something that everyone does. I mean, you know, it's almost, you could say, trendy in a sense, uh, is this really sucking side chain kind of sound. Some people like to put it on their whole mix, and, you know, in certain genres, that's, that's a cool thing, I guess. Uh, but for me personally, what I love to do is just do it with the drums. So any percussive bits and anything like that, I like to get really sucked out by the kick drum. So every time your kick drum comes, it's loud and proud and then everything else rises back in. And you know, different people have different taste on